Good evening everybody and welcome to the video. In this video, I'll be talking about um, how do we archive data from DynamoDB, right? So one of the things that I have observed is when people design DynamoDB tables, right? They ideally do not have a strategy to essentially to move the data outside the DynamoDB. For example, let's say you design a DynamoDB table, um, that's your operational tr uh, operational data that's that's holding in Dynamo, one year, two year, three year, four year. That data is gonna grow and so does your cost also grows with time. Which is why it's important to learn and know how are you gonna archive the data out of DynamoDB, how are you gonna delete data from in, in DynamoDB, right? So essentially all the big companies, uh, you know, they all maintain an operational data. So ideally, ideally it's about one to two years of operational data. Any data that is older than that is usually archived and essentially it's in the data lake. So if you want to go to the history or older records, you essentially go to the lake and get that. Then 10 to 20 years old data, they are essentially in the glacier, in the deep archive, and you can essentially retrieve that, right? But this video, I want to talk about TTL and stream specifically. So let's get started. So I just want to show you a very quick demo here. So I have a very simple table just to demonstrate you, right? Um, as you can see, I have a record from 2020, 2021, and 2022, right? What you observe here is a timestamp epoch. You can easily do that in Python by using, by saying to timestamp in a day, on a date time object, right? So I wanna show you something that is, so I wanna really show you this. This is really, really, really important. Remember, you need to add, uh, whenever you wanna do this, uh, I think this is the wrong website. Let me just, uh, yeah, this one. So when you design your DynamoDB table, you should have a field called TTL, which is an epoch timestamp and it's an integer. It, it has to be an integer, it cannot be a string. That is given by DynamoDB, I'm not telling you that, right? So essentially if you copy this and, and if you come to this tool and dump this one here, here you can see that's the date, right? Uh, right, you can, hopefully you can see that, right? 2020, right? And I've essentially added that um, just for your record as well. Now what I wanna show you, say I wanna only keep operational data, two years of operational data. So anything older than 2021, I wanna have it delete. In this case, it's this one that sh shall be deleted, right? So if you go to tables, uh, again, TTL demo, uh, if you go to additional settings and the, and the drop down uh, on the bottom section, there's an option called uh, time to live. Click on run preview and select the field, right? Now, what I will do is I want everything after i want to keep out everything after 2021 so i'll click that and if i select custom time or actually uh, custom epoch value and then i click on run preview so this shows that what's what item shall be deleted so right so for example uh, here i specified that uh, let me actually use uh, first month that makes more sense so I'll use this one to show you. So for example, if I put this one here, now as you can see, uh, item number 2020 shall be deleted. So which means after this date, uh, keep everything before this date, delete that, right? So essentially that helps you to essentially have maintain, like if you don't do that, that, that table is gonna grow, 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 and it's, your cost is gonna grow. And, uh, and so does your, uh, again, you know, performance, right? I know DynamoDB has a feature for infrequent access data, but ideally you wanna archive that data. In a blog post, and this is essentially what we are also doing uh, in our company as well. We have Dynamo tables and we have adopted this architecture. For basically, anytime an item is inserted, deleted or updated, even deleted, right? When a TTL occurs and when an item is deleted, we have DynamoDB streams there. What stream does, it essentially streams the event to Kinesis data stream and then to the Firehose and the firehose essentially has a lambda function, which essentially will convert Dynamo JSON into a normal, uh, you know, readable JSON and will dump into AWS S3. Then we essentially run glue crawler and Athena, so you can query, you can run ad, ad hoc queries on that uh, essentially data. If you do not have that, uh, if your Dynamo is not getting that much read and write, like if it's not that crazy, a simple lambda function would also work just fine for that. Again, if downstream uh, user care about the data in DynamoDB, you could publish that data to an SNS topic, and then you could essentially 
uh, as you know, you could have multiple subscribers, right, uh, with SNS, right? So it's called a fan out model, right? Uh, you can also load data to Redshift. So the, again, a lot of possibility opens up, right? Ideally, what everybody does is you will have a TTL, you'll set up a DynamoDB stream, and all the insert updates delete, you will stream it to your data lake and maintain your uh, data over there, the historical data. And as time grows, your DynamoDB will have operational data and older data is essentially archived into AWS S3 data lake. You have storage classes, which means data will go from standard storage to infrequent access and ultimately to uh, Glacier and Glacier Deep Archive. So that's how you save money on, the, on that, right? So that's that. So I, 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 again, I know there's a feature called uh, import and export to S3. But remember that format is a Dynamo JSON format. So which means you can't run Athena on that, which means you have to essentially run a job on that, which is why, as I said, right, this is one of a very good approach to use streams, right? Another thing that I want to show you or want to talk is, again, I have a video, but you can essentially run glue crawler, identify the schema in Dynamo, and then essentially write a, a glue job that will essentially move data from Dynamo to S3. But again, in this case, you're not deleting the data. So which is why I said you want to have TTL uh, on that. And this needs to be done prior you create a tables, right? Again, as I said, important thing, uh, it is important that the type has to be a number in Dynamo and not string, okay? So please go and read more. Um, what I'm gonna also do is I'm gonna create a hands-on lab on all this architecture. We're gonna create all the resources using serverless framework, right? DynamoDB tables, Kinesis data stream, Firehost, Lambda, S3, the entire stack we're gonna build up using serverless framework. It's gonna be absolutely fun. That's gonna be a lab session, which is the next video. So stay tuned and I hope you have enjoyed uh, watching such AWS videos. So if you all are also using DynamoDB in your company, ask yourself a question. How am I gonna move my data from DynamoDB? How much worth of operational data do I need to keep on DynamoDB? I know a lot of people build read model as well. So ask yourself how much data should be there and what do, and how would I essentially move the data after that particular time to some sort of a storage, right? Cheaper storage, right? Thank you so much and I hope you have enjoyed this article. I'll leave it in the description. And remember, as I keep saying, knowledge is power. Keep learning, keep reading, keep exploring. Uh, that's the best way, you know, to keep yourself up to date with all the upcoming technologies, right? Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any more questions, list your question in the comments and I'll try my best to answer all the questions. Thank you so much. And I'll see you guys in the next video that is hands-on lab session.